stage and proceed to hold a debate. We will help them cover up this nonsense. I will not be party to it. We must call them out. Very happy to hear from Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria. I doff my heart to you, sir, for having the courage to call out these people. As for Godalo comes from the private sector like I do, which employee goes to take up a job without an interview? He has been chairman of many boards. Would he dare do this in the private sector? It is because of the utter disdain they believe that elections are won by other means and not through the people. If any of them... Hello, one of our followers and subscribers of Oligo Song. I welcome you once again, especially to the platform that tell you all diluted truth. Guys, as I speak to you, Nigeria Union of Journalists and the Labour Party governor, you know, gubernatorial candidate, Olubide Akbata. Now... They blast, lambasted, uh, you know, PDP candidate and APC candidate because of the utter disrespect. You understand? They just display, they, they, you know, they, they, their acts, you know, uh, the, the utter disrespect they have for the people of Edo State. You understand? Now, Niger NUJ, they've taken action against these folks because uh, a debate was organized. Everybody was supposed to be there. Then suddenly APC candidate says he's not going to come. PDP candidate refused to say he's not going to come as well. Now, Nigerian you know, Julian, yeah, you know, Julian, I love the way they've, they've come out bold with that sugar coating their tongue. They said this is what Buari did at the best of the country by dodgy debate. They said this is what Tinubu did you know, by dodgy debates. You understand? And today, uh, his policy has put Nigeria in hell. Guys, this video. It's not you see what Olubide said here is pretty interesting, okay. But the action and the speech of Nigerian you know, journalists is what every Nigerian needs to hear. You understand? As you are watching this video, I want to make a special appeal. Let me like this video. Do not only like, please keep sharing this video, please. All right, God bless you. Let's watch it together now. Call me and inform me. We are not likely to be there. I said, why? Oh, if this man is not from this party, is not there, I will not come. The other told me, if this other person is not there, I will not come. And I said, why are you telling me this at this late hour? He said, that is the decision taken, and that is how it will be. So they have chosen to stay away in spite of all the efforts we put in into this preparation. I see that an act of total disrespect, not only to this event, not only to any jail, but uh, more critically to the people of the new state who want to listen to them. This refusal to engage in debates. That was meant to inform and educate the electorate is nothing short of disgraceful attitude. It sends a clear message that these candidates do not see you and your people as worthy of their time. They believe they can simply sail through this election without being accountable to the very people they want to govern. For this same reason, some civil society organizations have withdrawn their sponsorship for town hall meetings. They have scheduled because they received less notice of no show by political party candidates. Make no mistake. These actions are not only unreasonable, but they are utterly unconscionable. It is a stark demonstration of this growing impunity within our political class. Where candidates believe they can bypass the debates or time for meetings, deny you the information you need to know more about them, about their policies and their programs, and yet expect your vote. Why? Because they think that debates and time for meetings 
do not rule the nations. They fear that by the scrutiny of your own judgment, they might fall down. And instead of facing that you know, possibility, they run. And when politicians are going scrutiny, we must ask ourselves, what are they hiding? But let us not focus on the politicians. There's another group, they call it complicit in this disgraceful attitude. These are the handlers, many of whom are media professionals like us. Rather than preparing their candidates to stand before the people, to articulate their policies, to demonstrate leadership and communicate effectively, these professionals are trying to avoid debates altogether. And they to retain journalists and broadcasters, you are to answer. And instead of training candidates to be clear, concise, and compelling, they counsel them to shy away from any setting where real scrutiny might occur. This advice comes from a place of fear. Fear of how their candidates might perform, and the fear of the work required to repair the damage of co outing. But in doing so, they run the record of a chance to assess their potential leaders. This is not just a failure of the candidates. It is a failure of the very people who should be equipping them for public service. These goals and friends, the quality of candidates for different parties select the leaders. This trend is becoming something really uncommon. And it's not really common. Our current president avoided participating in presidential debates. And today the policy is being implemented. Policy is causing a total hardship. Rising inflation, soaring food prices, and the flood of the economy are being pushed without transparency that the debate could have offered. The sad truth is that by showing debates, politicians believe they can bypass accountability and in some cases even prepare to read elections to win. The fact that these enemies are willing to avoid scrutiny speaks volumes about their disregard for the democratic, for the democratic process and the importance of your vote. They believe that the election outcomes are predetermined by other means, not by the will of the people. And that is both dangerous and shameful. We cannot stand by and allow this culture of impunity to thrive. They are not really deserve better. We, the people, deserve leaders who are willing to engage, to explain, and to answer tough questions, not to hide behind their handlers and spin doctors. We need this debate, and any debate is not just a formality. It's the cornerstone of our democratic process. It is an opportunity for you, the people, to evaluate the candidates, to understand their policies, and to make informed choices. But when the candidates refuse to participate, they rob you of that opportunity. And in doing so, they undermine the very foundations of democracy. So, to those who have chosen to stay away from this debate, I say this. The adult of season, this adult of season intervention will make or mark our drive for the French democratic ideals in Nigeria. It has disrespected the people of the state. They have demonstrated a lack of accountability. And in doing so, you have shown that you are not ready to lead. The people of Edo deserve leaders who respect them who are willing to stand before them and be judged by their ideas and policies, not the leaders who believe they can read their way to power or cause through without being accountable. We will not forget this now, this is And I urge the people of Edo State not to forget it either. Because democratic pride 
when they're not really informed, engaged, and not afraid to demand better from those who seek to lead. As it is today, we don't have any information on them. When you run from one party to another, you know they're only not there to dance and to sing. That's all. There are no vivid policies that are given to us. This is the only opportunity where policies are supposed to be given and to hold them accountable today, tomorrow, or even two years after they've taken the one and the taken position. So I leave this decision to be made by you and your people who have been robbed of an opportunity to see them, ask questions, and I say thank you for this opportunity. In the building, I want to run from the base. Who de Zuzu? I greet everyone in the room and I greet all those who are watching on television and listening to us online. I I think it's important to give context to this issue. Probably beyond the context already provided by the broadcasting organization of Nigeria and the Union of Journalists. Like every other candidate, I believe I received, I received at least four invitations to show up at one debate or the other. I have accepted at this day because I am ready to debate anybody on the issue of this particular election. But I started to notice something funny when one particular debate organizer called me to say that they wanted to reorganize the debate into a town hall and that these candidates will now come separately. And I said, why? Why are you allowing these people, why are you giving them what they call a cop out? Why are you allowing them escape scrutiny? Why are you allowing them run away from the people? Then I was, I was, I was to attend the, the, uh, the debate conducted by the independent television organization here in Minnesota. I was ready to attend because I had accepted only for me to find out that the APC candidate would not be there and the PDP candidate would also not be there. And I said, I don't believe in papering over the cracks. You know, I don't even put water from my mouth when I talk. I say it as it is. For those two parties who in the last 25 years have put us in the mess that we are presently, to attempt to escape scrutiny, I was in the chair and I told them, I can't go there. I will not allow this to happen. Today, we have the debate organized by no other body, no other organization, no less organization than the Nigeria Union of Journalists. In partnership with BON, Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria, sponsored by leading media houses in Nigeria. Representatives of the people, those who are to put our feet to the fire. And again, the corporates, PDP and ABC have refused to show in utter disregard for our people. And of course, Aswe Godalo would not be here. Why would he be here? He has been chief economic advisor to this government for seven and a half years. I call names though, so I don't know, I don't, I don't, there's no need to paper over the cracks. Seven and a half years you have been chief economic advisor and you say you go do one, what do you want to do? Now, now, nine day break. Monkey the bone dog. No. That's why he can't come here. Because you must be, you, it is disingenuous for that individual to attempt to extricate himself from a team that he has been an integral part of. You cannot. You say your hand not there. Your full body the inside. Income profile 16 billion. Debt profile 600 billion. To borrow money not be the problem. Now, what you use and do not be the issue. But they won't come here. I am of the view that if we mount this stage and proceed to hold a debate, we will help them cover up this nonsense. I will not be party to it. We must call them out. Very happy to hear from Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria. I doff my hat to you, sir, for having the courage to call out these people. Aswe Godalo comes from the private sector like I do. 
Which employee goes to take up a job without an interview? He has been chairman of many boards. Would he dare do this in the private sector? It is because of the utter disdain. They believe that elections are won by other means and not through the people. If any of them, if their godfathers called them today, would they not show up? They will show up because that is where in their minds, in their reckoning, that is where power lies. The advice I receive from the professional politicians, not finish your money, oh. not finish your money, oh. wait until the last day, you know, saying at that time we need the money, keep your money, because they intend to win elections through violence and manipulation, and that costs money. Politics has been monetized. Poverty has been weaponized. I did not write my manifesto until I had done at least one lap. Until I had gone to Orion where I heard that they have not had power for 10 years. Until I went to Iguabazua where there's virtually no government presence for a first republic, I'm sorry, a first generation local government headquarters, Iguabazua. People say you're always bashing the government. There's some people say, you know the apologists will tell you it should be, please let it be issues based, issues based. Is it not an issue that you earn 16 billion a month in this state and this state is such a sorry, in such a sorry state? It is an issue. Is it not an issue that you label your educational system, Edo Best? I mean, the, the roofs are caving in and water uh, pours in the rain on the children and they are lying on their tummies copying notes. Is that not an issue? Is it not an issue that you knock down a hospital to build a museum? I'd rather that the headline tomorrow it be this one that Bon is upset. NUJ is pissed off. The three candidates who came said, We will not go, we will not go debate until 